Hello, this is David Williams from the Electronic Engineering Technology Program at Okanagan College. This video is on energy and power, and it's intended for people who are not physicists and who are not physics students, because some of the definitions are going to be a little bit imprecise or vague, and really the purpose here is to give you, it's to enhance any intuition or intuitive ideas that you have about power and energy and give you a little bit of quantitative grounding. Now the first question to ask is what is energy? And it's actually a tougher thing to define than you might imagine. And if you were to look in a textbook, for example, it might give you a definition something like this. Energy is the capacity to do work. Okay, that's fine. But what do we mean by work? Well, if you were to look in the same textbook, it might give you a definition like this. Work is the quantity of energy transferred from one system to another. Well, we've just run into a situation where we've got some definitions here which are a little bit circular, a little bit self-referential, in fact. And this is in part because it is hard to define what energy is. I think that most of us has a, have a pretty good understanding, intuitive anyway, of what energy is. For example, we know that energy is in oil that we pump out of the ground and we can refine it and then we can put it into our car and that car then is able to drive. So really energy is about this stuff that can be converted from one form to another and can let us do other stuff. So in this example here, energy in coming from the oil in the ground is in form of chemical bonds and it gets refined and then it's a, it's a more chemical energy. When we put it into a car that gets burned and it creates heat energy which is going to move the pistons in the motor, con so converting that heat energy into mechanical energy, and then that mechanical energy gets converted into other mechanical energy of the, the rotating tires, and that's what drives the car along the ground. To give some ideas of, of this energy conversion and different forms of energy as it applies to electrical systems, we have on the left here various different systems that can convert energy from one form into in, in electricity. The photovoltaic panels can convert e energy in sunlight into electricity, into electrical energy. The dam can convert the potential energy in the water into electricity. Power plants, nuclear or coal, whatever that picture is, can convert the energy, the, either the nuclear energy or the energy in, in the coal bonds into electrical energy. And wind, wind turbines can convert mechanical energy in the air into electrical energy. Now this conversion is, is useful because electrical energy is, is very easy to transport. And so we've got all these high powered, uh, high voltage transmission lines across the country that take energy from its source to where it's needed, our homes. And then in our homes we can convert that electrical energy into other forms of energy, into sound, into light, into, into forms that can provide us entertainment on the TV. So hopefully you already had this intuitive understanding of what energy is. It's the stuff that can be converted into other forms, and then when it gets converted, it can do useful things to us. We also often want to know how much energy there is in something, or how much energy gets converted from one form to another. And we have all sorts of units for doing this, this kind of measurement of energy. And you can see I've got 20 different units here, and some that when I did the when I first doing the, the research for this I had never heard of before the most useful type of unit I think is one that relates to some real-world phenomenon and one of those real-world phenomenon that I think that we we understand and, and and can all relate to is the calorie and why the calorie well the calorie is a, is a unit that is often used for measuring how much energy there is in food so for example in a nice little gingerbread cookie like this, there's probably about 100 calories of, of energy. And when it's sitting in the cookie, it's in the form of the chemical bonds within, within the cookie. Now if we take that cookie and we shove it in our mouths and eat it, now our body has that chemical energy inside of it. And the great thing about that is now our body can convert that chemical energy into other forms. For example, the amount of energy in that cookie can probably let us go running for about 10, 8 or 10 minutes, depending how fast we're running. So we took that energy in the cookie, that 100 calories, and we've converted it, we can convert it into mechanical energy. 
100 calories of, of mechanical energy can let us run for about 8 or 10 minutes. So the calorie is a useful unit because we can relate the calorie to, to food energy and we can relate the calorie to mechanical energy and uh, mechanical energy that our body that our body uses. Now what about for other forms of energy like for example electrical energy and, and heating energy? Well there are two units that are commonly used for measuring these things. One is the kilowatt hour and if you've ever taken a look at your electrical bill it's probably measured the amount of energy that you use in kilowatt hours. The other unit of energy is the gigajoule and for my gas bills anyway the amount of energy delivered is measured in, in gigajoules. To me, the kilowatt hour is a much more useful unit of energy because I can, I can directly relate it to real world phenomenon much more, than I, much more easily than I can for gigajoules. For example, the kilo, well, what, what is one kilowatt hour? It's, it's the amount of energy used by a thousand, an 1,000 watt appliance if it runs for one hour. So. 10 100 watt light bulbs that are on for an hour will use up one kilowatt hour of energy or convert I guess technically speaking will convert electrical energy into light and heat energy a 5,000 watt clothes dryer that's on for 12 minutes 5,000 watts is 5 kilowatts 5 kilowatts times a fifth of an hour is one kilowatt hour one 100 watt light bulb on for 10 hours is also one kilowatt hour so these real world things that are using energy or converting energy if they're on for certain periods of time that period of time is going to be one kilowatt hour and the basic idea is figure out how many kilowatt hours something used read how much power the thing consumes whether that's is pretty easy to do on light bulbs and such multiply that by how many hours it's on for that tells you how many kilowatt hours that thing has consumed and quantifying energy usage is is really important for doing things like comparing power consumption between countries this plot here this graph here shows the power consumption in kilowatt hours per day per person versus the GDP per capita for various different countries and you can see that in general as countries countries that have a higher GDP also use more power per person per day it's also useful to compare energy demand and energy supply and see where our energy is coming from and see where the energy is being used and what percentage is being used by different things and what percentage is being produced by different things. It's also useful for quantifying house household energy usage. Um, this is a typical Canadian household going to use these numbers, these amounts of energy per day for a total of about 51 kilowatt hours per day of, of total energy use. So hopefully at this point you have a good intuitive idea of what energy is as well as an idea or at least one unit that energy is measured in. Now the kilowatt hour is actually not the official, well it is a unit of energy but it's not the official SI unit of energy. The official SI unit of, ener unit of energy is the joule but as, I, as I've just discussed here I find the kilowatt hour to be a much more intuitive measure of, of energy. Now what about power? So this discussion was going to be on power and energy. So where does power come into play? Well power is how quickly something converts or uses or produces or consumes or how, whatever term you want to use. How quickly it produces or consumes energy. So for example, comparing power to energy. If I want to go for a... If I, if I want to go a kilometer away. Whether I walk or run, I'm going to use about the same amount of energy to get to walk that kilometer. However, if I run, I'm going to get there faster. So I'm going to use up my energy faster. So running is a more powerful way of, of moving than walking is. Because if I walk, it's going to take me longer. So the amount of energy I use divided by time is going to give me a measurement of how much power I'm using. So energy is a measure of how much stuff gets converted from one form to another. Power is a measure of how quickly that stuff gets delivered or used or converted. The SI units for these two measurements. Energy, the SI unit is the joule. We were using the kilowatt hour before, but the official SI unit is the joule. 
and the definitions, here's a couple of definitions, it's the amount of energy needed to apply one newton of force over a distance of one meter, so that would be a mechanical form of energy. It's also the amount of energy required to move one coulomb of charge through one volt of potential difference, so there's a, a, an, an electrical definition for how much one, one joule is. And the SI unit for power is the watt, and one watt is equal to delivering energy or converting energy at a rate of one joule per second. Now while the watt is the SI unit of power, power can also be expressed in different ways. For example, if I want to know how many kilowatt hours of electricity I use in my house per day, that is a measure of power because that's energy in kilowatt hours over a day, a unit of time. So I hope at this point now you have a little bit better understanding of what exactly energy is as well as how it relates to power. So they're not the same thing but there is that relationship where power is a rate of delivering or using or consuming energy. What I'd like you to do now is to pause the video and copy down these practice problems and take a shot at figuring them all out. So I'll give you a second to pause here. Okay, now that you've had a chance to write these down and figure out all these problems, I'll give you the solutions. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about of energy and power as well as the relationship between those two quantities and have had a chance to practice some problems with energy and power and I will see you in the next video.